Today, NVIDIA shows off path tracing. NVIDIA's next-gen supercards are weird. These GPUs are officially done, and NVIDIA's releasing consumer CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA dropped an interesting new video showcasing path tracing in Alan Wake 2, or what NVIDIA calls here full ray tracing. It also uses ray reconstruction and DLSS to get this level of performance, and I have to admit that it does look really good. With that said, I'd argue that it's not worth it given the wild requirements for the game in general, not just path tracing but anything else, which makes me think they spent a bit too much time working on this mode. Regardless, it does look nice but as you can see with the performance, even with DLSS on, the 4090 is only about to get around 80 to 100 FPS. Of course, this is 4K, so it's not that bad, but what do you think? Does it look good enough given the likely big loss in performance? Let me know down in the comments below. Next up, NVIDIA's next generation supercards just got a new update. But before I get to that, if you love PC hardware as much as I do, turn your hobby into a career with the one place I trust to learn computer science. Brilliant, the only learning platform that was made to teach the STEM field. So you not only know you're learning the right stuff, but you actually learn it the best way. Because unlike a lot of the other online platforms, Brilliant actually teaches you the best way, which is to learn by doing it yourself. So no more boring lectures or memorizing a bunch of formulas. Brilliant uses fun in and interactive puzzles to keep you engaged the whole time. Whether it's learning something simple like computer memory or learning about AI and neural networks. Brilliant has something for everyone and every skill level. To top it all off, you can learn while at home on the computer or on the go with their app. So don't wait anymore and give it a try for 30 days free at brilliant.org slash gamermel. Plus you can get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story, according to a new tweet from the well-known leaker Copite 7 Kimmy, NVIDIA's RTX 4080 Super and 4070 Super could be mixing chips. Now he says that it's just his opinion, but he typically says things like that even when he's spot on. He goes on to clarify that the 4080 Super can use the 8102 GPU or 8103. For those who don't know, cards are made from GPUs with names like this. And each GPU can be made into multiple different cards, like the 81 104 makes up both the 4070 and 4070 Ti. That's because the 4070 uses a cut down version. So here he claims that the 4080 Super is going to be built from two different GPUs. This would allow Nvidia to use either GPU to make a 4080 Super depending on where the stock is for each etc. So it has benefits, but it's tough because it would mean that Nvidia has to make two different GPUs have the exact same performance. Otherwise you'll have a 4080 Super with the 8102 getting more performance than the 4080 Super with 8103. Regardless, if this is right, Nvidia is planning to do just that. The 4070 Super is apparently also able to use an 8103 chip or 8104. At the end of the day, NVIDIA's new supercards are hopefully set to bring added performance without any added cost. Fingers crossed. Next up, last month I covered a rumor from the leaker Kepler on Twitter. In it, he claimed that AMD would soon be ending support for both Polaris and Vega GPUs. So that means the RX 500 series, RX 400 series, Vega 64, etc. Well, AMD's officially ended Vulkan support for both Vega and Polaris in Linux. You can see in the change log for their Q4 release that GFX8 and GFX9 are no longer supported. And those are of course Polaris and Vega. According to Foronix, the GPUs are still supported in AMD's GPU kernels, but this does look like the beginning of the end. While AMD hasn't officially stated an end of support in Windows, they haven't gotten an updated driver in over a month. Now I will say that AMD actually listed the RX 590 is supported for FSR 3.0 without frame generation. But without an update in over a month and drop support in Vulkan, I definitely think Polaris and Vega are over. The question is whether they'll still support integrated GPUs or not. Remember that their most recent desktop APUs still use Vega. So that could be an issue for AMD, but we shall see. Either way, it's a sad day. 
And lastly for today, the CPU market is about to change forever because Nvidia is actually working on consumer PC CPUs. According to a new report from Reuters, Nvidia has quietly begun working on ARM-based CPUs that run Windows OS, meaning these aren't server chips or anything like their Grace Hopper chip, etc. According to the report, this is part of a new shift from Microsoft to help companies make ARM-based processors for PCs. Ultimately, that's to challenge Apple's own ARM based processors. This would obviously be a pretty big blow to Intel, and after the article dropped, Nvidia stock actually went up, with Intel stock going down. And get this, Qualcomm just announced their Snapdragon X Elite processors for notebooks, and they're actually looking really nice. What's wild is that according to this, even AMD is working on ARM-based chips for PC, and both AMD and Nvidia could begin selling ARM chips for PCs by 2025, so not that far off. With all of that said, this obviously would be a very tough transition for PCs given software developers have spent countless hours optimizing their programs for x86. So a major switch in architecture could be tough, but Microsoft has already laid the groundwork with Windows 11. We'll just have to see how things ultimately go. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Nvidia making consumer CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.